Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast, Bone Bootcamp with Sarah Purcell. I'm your host, Sarah. This podcast, my newsletter, and all of my programs are designed to help women approach aging with confidence and courage. I'm specifically focused on bone growth promotion and skeleton safe movements in Bone Bootcamp, the course, and Short and Sweet with Sarah, the membership. In this podcast, I strive to bring you all the most current information on living your best life as you age. Let's get on with today's episode. Hi, and welcome to Bone Bootcamp, the podcast. I am so lucky to have Lisa Feiner here with me today. She is a co-founder of Sharp Again, a not-for-profit. She de- helps individuals deal with cognitive decline, and I believe she also works with medical professionals. So I'm going to hand it over to Lisa to tell us a little bit about her work, what she does, and how she got into it. So Thanks take so it away, much, Lisa. Sarah, for having me on today. Oh um, my gosh, thank you. So Sharp Again Naturally is a nonprofit that was founded about eight years ago. And I was one of four people, uh, I'm a holistic practitioner, I'm a holistic uh, certified health coach, and really got my start in business many, many years ago. I was an MBA and have done like me. <laughs> lots of nonprofit work, um, leading a nonprofit board, which was very helpful when it came time to starting Sharp Again Naturally. And We're an organization that is dedicated to informing people about the causes of memory loss and dementia and how those can be addressed. Uh, Each of us has the ability really to keep our mind sharp throughout our entire lives, even into old age. And I think today, People associate dementia or memory loss with with aging, but it doesn't have to be that way. And we are here as an organization, not only to educate um, all of us, you know, individuals, but also medical practitioners about what these causes are and how they can be treated. We also offer programs to help individuals who think they either might be slipping a little bit or they're worried about their cognition because perhaps they have dementia in their family. We have programs to help them as well. Which is wonderful. So, so wonderful. And how did you find yourself going from an MBA to this work with helping individuals with their brains? So there was a media, there was a stop there in the middle where I got a counseling degree thinking I might go into psychology, but then with my husband and our children, we moved to London for a few years, and I had been getting allergy shots between April and October every week, and when I got there, they said, we really want to send you to a homeopathic doctor, and she literally eradicated my allergies. I mean, today, if there's a really bad allergy season, maybe I'll have some you know, some small symptoms, some weak symptoms, but but certainly nothing like I was experiencing. I could barely function. I was so exhausted from from my allergies. Um, So it was in London that I was exposed to other alternative therapies. And when I came back to the States, I wanted to get involved with some sort of integrative or holistic practice. Um, I had thought about becoming a naturopath, uh, my children were very small. We only had one program here in the Northeast. So um, I eventually decided to teach on the health coach. And uh, it was a great decision for so many reasons. Um, very versatile. I learned a lot about health and what true healing is versus treating symptoms um, and all the components of health as well. You know, it, it's not just our nutrition or our exercise or, you know, the things that seem to be very obvious, but it's all right. those other things in life that nourish us that we focus on. So like our sleep. Like our sleep. Very, very critical. So 
I've also been on the board of a nursing and rehabilitation facility in Westchester, New York for about 20 years. And I volunteer, I love elders, I volunteer regularly um, with them, but was seeing so much Alzheimer's and dementia. And sort of the combination of the two, knowing that there are real underlying causes for disease and seeing such a rise in these cases, when we first heard that there were reasons and causes for memory loss, it, it made absolute sense. I mean, why not, right? It like so many other diseases. So that's that was the trigger, right? That's what got us really excited right. to get involved. And um, we just decided we had to get this information out to everyone. And is that when Sharp Again was born? That is when Sharp Again was born. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad it was. I, For me, it was reading um, Dale Bredesen's book mm -hmm. that was this aha moment. And you may have read research prior to the publishing of his book. You probably read his original research. Yeah. Yes, I did. But it's amazing. And at the time, I thought, I don't even have Alzheimer's in my family. And I thought, I need to find a practitioner who does this <laughs> because I want to know more. And that wasn't so easy. Um, I'm so glad that I'm hearing more, more and more, that there are health coaches and nutritionists and doctors who are practicing but it, brain But health. it's really the integrative and functional medicine doctors yes. and the naturopaths who have been trained. And that's what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. it's a wonderful thing. I, you know, ironically, when we first started this work, we have a naturopath on our board, and he was training his own colleagues to know that they could treat brain, the brain right. because even though they've been educated around it, the idea that you could treat dementia was a, is a relatively new idea. But it's sort right. of, you know, it's how neuroplasticity has come into being and the idea that right. um, the brain really can shrink and re-enlarge and you know these neurons can be regenerated this is this is relatively new in the literature right and so there is some what we we have called to date normal cognitive decline but essentially i sense that you're saying what is normal you're you're kind of right helping us see that so inter in can affect. interestingly our brains in terms of processing speed start to decline even in our late thirties and our forties. Worse. <laughs> you know, so this happens there are a number of things that are going on, right? So as you age you know, you have, if you look at the 10 causes, you could be going through, let's say, menopause, for instance, where your hormones are fluctuating, and that could have an impact on your brain. But typically, women bounce back after a period of time. Um, so we all go through different things in our lives that might impact our brains. But if we've been relatively safe and healthy, you know, you will see the difference in the processing speed. But you're also acquiring so much new information that that also, as you get older, can help to delay your um, recovery, you know, being able to to remember words or mm -hmm. people's names or things like that. But it, it should not be debilitating in any way. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, how do I know what's age-related and when I really have a problem? And it's typically when you've been very good at something, like numbers, and you start having mm -hmm. problems manage, like balancing your checkbook, or you've always been great with names and you're very social and suddenly you cannot remember people's names. And you, so it's a change in something that was normal for I, you. And I think right. that that's really the key. You know, that's, that's what people should keep in mind. I mean, we all have memory lapses. There are days that we're under more stress or we haven't slept well. We have to understand what is kind of a routine everyday issue and then what is something that really has, uh, you know, more, that's more consequential, I would say. Mm -hmm. I get it. 
And a lot so, of times we'll notice it ourselves. You know, we call that subjective right. cognitive impairment. Um, and a lot of times our friends will say, oh, you're fine. Everyone has that. But if this uh, persists and it's something that you really feel is a problem for you, chances are you should have it checked out. Right. And essentially what I hear you telling us is that we do have some control over these factors. And so checking it out is much better than not because it doesn't mean you're going on medicine. It means you're going to focus on things you have control over. Am I right? Absolutely. You know, it used to be that there was, since you, there was nothing that doctors could tell you to do, people hid it for a long time and their spouses or their partners or their friends or their kids would cover for them. And you try to keep it a secret for as long as possible. And that no longer really serves us. So the sooner we get help, the higher the likelihood that we can take care of whatever issues there are and we can return to full, um, you know, full cognition. And that is just so amazing. The first time I read that, that people have reversed cognitive decline. And I think one of the things I loved was the story you told about the, I think he was a biochemist. His mother um, had had a stroke and was in bed. Yes. Yeah, so, the, so Rick, um, he's a nutritional microbiologist. And his mother had had a series of strokes and was sent home from the hospital on hospice. Uh, they set up a hospital bed in their living room, and he said, I have nothing to lose. I'm going to create some really healthy smoothies for her. And he put to, he, she could sit through a straw, which is about all she could do. And he made her these really nutritional smoothies with things like... Um, you know, omega-3s and, and some ground-up nuts, no dairy, no gluten, uh, no sugar, but like fruits, you know, fruits and vegetables, you know, really good nutrition for the brain. And on that kind of a diet, she started perking up and she lost some weight and eventually got up and was mobile and eventually, I mean, she lived four more years. She cooked. She, um, her cognition returned. It was interesting. Stunning. Um, you know, she, when she died, she didn't die of memory loss or dementia. Um, she, she just, you know, she had other complications. But she was in, they did, they did a uh, follow-up interview with her. And while you could tell the, you know, from the stroke, she had a little bit of speech, you know, issue um, she was fully, cog you know, cognitively lucid, and um, that was an Engaged. amazing story. And Rick was involved with Sharp again early on, and so we just felt we had all of this great information and yeah. things that people wouldn't believe necessarily. Like it seems a right. little hard to believe that our food or our our exercise or our sleep or some of these, you know, things could be so impactful on the brain. Right. But there's been a ton of research pretty much on every aspect of what we talk about in the last 10 years. And right. it just complements, you know, what we've been saying. But it took a while for, for this to come out and for kind of the rest of the world to, to start believing it. Right. And I sense that the message is not really out there into the mass population, that people don't realize that lifestyle choices, that we have choices. We can make choices that can help us prevent cognitive decline. That's right. I, I think there's a lot that goes into that denial, if you will, at times, um, or disbelief, or... and. And I really understand it as a health coach. It can be hard to change our habits and our lifestyle. And even if we want to, if there's any cognitive decline, you need help. You know, you need either a spouse or a partner or an adult child who lives nearby or a care caregiver, somebody who can help you kind of stay the course and, and do 
what, the, what everything recommended for you personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it can be, it can be challenging at times. Um, and at a certain age, uh, and this is not a blanket statement, but a lot of times as people age, the desire and the ability to make these changes, it's it just much harder. I see. Okay. So do you find it's easier to work with people who want to prevent cognitive impairment? We're all better they, off are, present, preventing because yeah. if you can prevent, then you do not have to worry about reversing. and. Depending upon what the cause is and how long mm-hmm. you've been experiencing problems or, let's say, exposure to toxins or whatever the cause might be, for different people, also different genetics, um, for different people, it, it can be harder than for others to regain their cognition, full cognition. Yes. So right. prevention is always ideal. Right. Right. And the fact that I experienced, and many of the ladies listening to this podcast experienced postmenopausal fog, it does start to settle. But you, I do recognize that um, retrieval of dates and times, which has never been my strong point, but I think it's a little bit sketchier now. And when I read that book, I thought, I think I eat well, but when I read everything about whether it's my bones, my heart, or my brain, I could do better. And I just had to admit to myself that I didn't eat enough greens. That would be my big one. And you know, that that is something that's not that hard to correct, really, if, right. you, if you really care about it and you work at it. And sometimes right. it's it's helpful to get some help with it, you know, a health coach or yeah. somebody, a friend, a buddy, you know, who can, right. who you'll, you can each cook in your own kitchens, but you can be cooking together over a phone call right. or Zoom or, I mean, there are ways, right. you know, even with our exercise, um, I mean, you exercise, you know, you're a, you know, exercise guru, but <laughs> for me, um, you know, I love certain things, but aerobic exercise is not my strength. So I really have to work at that. But, but during right. COVID, I've been walking with my daughter uh, on the oh, phone that's so nice. and we talk. And uh-huh. for that 45 minutes or an hour, we're both out there getting exercise. Right. I do that with my sister. <laughs> yeah, it's great. If you have a friend or a, a, or a somebody, you know, somebody. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, there are ways, there are ways, um, really to address almost each one of these things that that right. we know are problematic for the brain. And I know you mentioned 10 things, which I believe you have on your website. Don't you have a list yes. of the 10 things? Yeah, they're really 12. I mean, they're, they're 12 okay. sort of embedded in the 10. And, you know, there are other things that we are watching that we know okay. potentially could be added to the list. But I'll, you want me to quickly go through them? So I would love it. What yes. it is? Okay. Yes. So we have um, nutritional imbalances and deficiencies, and that includes not only food, but supplementation as well. And obviously working with an integrative or functional medicine doctor, these are some of the things that they look at. Toxins in our food, water, air, home, and work environments. So just to be aware of what we might be exposed to. Um, Effects of prescription medications, that could be anything from the side effects to the interactions to um, just, you know, there are, I've heard so many stories about people whose parents have been in the hospital and the doctors there have put them on certain medications that made them, uh, I won't won't say delirious, but but not, not sharp, not functioning well. Right. And right. when they've asked that the their loved one be taken off the medication or that it be, you know, titrated down, um, they've seen their parent come back and wow. they've gotten them back. But if you, you need to be an advocate for your own health. This is such a great example of that. Um, right. So we know as people get older and in this category as well, 
um, anesthesia, general anesthesia, is problematic for the older brain. So unfortunately, some people have to have operations close together. And if you have uh, elective ability to say, I want to wait a little bit longer, it's better so that you're you're not being put under anesthesia twice too in too, too close in succession. Um, I see. So then we have mercury and other heavy metals. Uh, some of those are toxic for us, and they're neurotoxic, so they're very toxic for the brain. They cross the blood-brain barrier. Um, hormonal imbalances, which you alluded to after um, menopause, but even things like thyroid or Cortisol levels um, mm. can impact the brain and cause inflammation. Cortisol, especially if it's, it's you've got too much stress and it's too high. Um, you know, inflammation in general is a problem for the brain. Um, it, it's a problem for and the body. For the gut? For, for the gut, for everything. Yeah, for the body. Right? I know, for the bones. Right. <laughs> it's not good. So we want to keep our inflammation levels down and... You know, we're looking at things like Lyme disease or oral infections, which we may or may not feel, food sensitivities, which we may or may not feel or want to admit to. Um, we yeah. we kind of like our our food habits and our favorite foods, and I get that. Yes. But if they're causing uh, undue inflammation in our gut, it's not going to be, uh, you know, great for our brain. And things like mold, you know, so anything or any pain, you know, if we tend to ignore, you know, human beings are very good at ignoring things or saying, you know, I'll wait and see if it'll, mm -hmm. but if you've waited and, and it still persists, you, you need to get things checked out. And I know during COVID, it's definitely something that we don't want to do going into doctor's offices, but we all have to make those decisions about really what we can live with and what we should be, you know, attending to. Um, that makes sense. And then I call these the lifestyle causes. So not enough exercise, not enough mental stimulation, and not enough social interaction. All three of these things during COVID have been real, really problematic for people. And we all have to work at them. Prolonged stress. And I would say, mm -hmm. so stress and anxiety, uh, again, you know, those cortisol levels um, right. can impact our sleep. Um, impact our inflammation, and then sleep and breathing problems. So we think that we don't need as much sleep as we get older, and the fact is we do. Um, it may not be exactly the same type of sleep, but we all need deep sleep, and we all need REM sleep, REM, REM sleep. So different things happen at different phases during the night, which impact our brain. So in deep right. sleep, our brains get cleared out of plaques and I, I think of it like the muck. You know, it gets carried away in the cerebral spinal fluid. Um, right. And so that only happens during deep sleep. And then the uh, consolidation of memory also happens during sleep. So, so we really need to get adequate sleep. And then finally, number 10 is physical and emotional trauma that can really happen at any age. And it, it's really all right. types of trauma, um, emotional and physical. So it could be a blow to the head or you fall, you know, you have a skiing accident um, or a car mm -hmm. accident, but it also could be emotional abuse or, you know, PTSD um, or early childhood trauma that needs to be addressed. All of these things can impact your your brain. I the last one I did not know about. Yeah, very interesting. It's um, I, I think it's because it, it, Dr. Bredesen doesn't really write about it yet, right. or I think he's just starting potentially to okay. to take a look at that. But it definitely the the, the research is there. Okay. Yeah. Believe you. And, you know, everything we do yeah. at Tropic and Naturally is really based um, on the scientific literature. Um, right. Which is why I love what your organization provides, because it really is, it's science-based. 
Right. You have evidence to support what you're suggesting we do. And, you know, one of the goals initially was to bring all this information into one place, one repository, right. because there was a, a study here and, a, you know, and something published, right. you know, years ago there. And right. there were books that were written, but there was nothing that brought it together that said this is there's a pattern here. There, right. There's a way to address this. Right. And I do when I do think about it, I think about I loved math. Matthew Walker's book on sleep. I loved Dr. Bredesen's book, uh, which has a lot to do with diet and supplementation. You were the first place that I encountered where you put exercise, sleep, nutrition, and all the toxins and all the other things. You really put it all together in one place. I still don't know if there's any other website that does that. Maybe there is. But yeah, I don't think to the extent that we do it, um, right. even hydration oh, yes. uh, is How could we so forget hydration? important and impacts the brain. I'm thinking of Quench, right, which is another book right. that's on the market and they're pretty right. recent. Um, so right. yes, there are these books that come out and they're all wonderful. It, it's mm -hmm. a matter of putting this together and saying, how is this really impacting the human body? as a whole. Right. Right. So thank you so much for the work that you do. And we'll be sure in the show notes to have a link to your website and people can get the, the list of 10 slash 12. And I think you also have a questionnaire on the website. You know, we did. We're taking a look. Oh, at, it's okay. yeah. We're taking a look. We're re revising the website, and we are taking a look at that. Um, questionnaires are always wonderful, but you want to make sure that they're really valid and reliable. Right. And, I know. You know, they, they're giving people an adequate, you know, a, an accurate look at at really what we're talking right. about because brain health is important, and we don't want people feeling that there's really something wrong with their cognition if there isn't. But there are questions that can be asked that will help people say, oh yeah, you know, I didn't remember, you know, when I was young, I had that accident or I, you know, uh, right. or, or whatever, you know, it could be. Um, you know, I recall, you know, one of my daughters had surgery uh, at four weeks old and, yeah. you know, exposing even an infant to you know, antibiotics at that age can impact their gut health. So, you know, you think right. back and you, sometimes you don't realize. So, so a, question, right. a questionnaire can be helpful. Um, right. It can be. And you know what? I really appreciate the fact that you don't just leave a questionnaire out there to linger. You take it back in and you're reassessing it and you're making sure it does what you want it to do. And that to me is a sign of a good organization. So all the more reason for me to suggest people go to your website, which you can share the www. It's, yeah, it's like. sharpagain.org. And you can Easy. always write to us at info at sharpagain.org. Um, if you want to find out more about our programs, they're up on the website. Uh, you can, right. you know, you can get more information that way. Well, it sure is easier than reading the stack of books I have yeah. next to my bed. So <laughs> I love what you do. And thank you so much for coming here and trying to, in a short period of time, give everybody a quick view of, of what wonderful resources there are available to them. I'm really excited that people will go and investigate what you offer. Well, thank you, Sarah. And, you know, as a nonprofit, we, you know, it's so helpful to be able to speak to your audience and for them to know that these resources are available. So thank you. That's great. Well, thank you so much. And I'll probably have you on again. I'd love to. So thanks again. All right. Great. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Bone Bootcamp podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're loving the podcast, please subscribe. Also, share with a friend. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're inspired, a really helpful thing to do is leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. Thank you again for joining me. See you in the next episode.